What if I told you the next tallest building in the world won't just break records, it will destroy them? A skyscraper two kilometers high is already being planned, and it's unlike anything you've ever seen. From the Burj Khalifa to the Shanghai Tower, the race for the sky has always been about more than just height. It's a symbol of ambition, power, and what technology can achieve. But now, engineers and architects are preparing to go far beyond anything we thought was possible, with a building that could reach 2,000 meters, or 1.24 miles, into the sky. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at this jaw-dropping concept, where it might be built, how it could be engineered, and why this futuristic megatower could change everything we know about living in cities. Let's rewind a bit. The tallest building today is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, standing at 828 meters. That's already three times the height of the Eiffel Tower, but multiple countries are already competing to take that title. Saudi Arabia's Jeddah Tower, once expected to reach over 1,000 meters, is still under construction, though progress has stalled for years. So what comes next? A proposal that doubles even that. So what would a two-kilometer skyscraper even look like? Picture this, over 500 floors, climate-controlled interior zones, sky lobbies, vertical transportation systems using maglev elevators, and entire neighborhoods stacked on top of one another. It's not just a tall building, it's a vertical city, with apartments, shopping malls, schools, hospitals, gardens, and office spaces, all self-contained. And above the clouds, observation decks, possibly even space research stations, some designs even propose wind turbines at higher altitudes to generate electricity using jet stream level winds. Sounds like science fiction, right? But the real question is, can we actually build this? There are three major challenges. Structural integrity. A tower this tall must withstand enormous wind loads, temperature variation, and seismic activity. Materials. Traditional concrete and steel won't cut it. Engineers are exploring carbon fiber composites, super light alloys, and even self-healing concrete. Elevator technology. For a two kilometer building, traditional cables are too heavy. Companies like ThyssenKrupp are developing magnetic levitation elevators that can move both vertically and horizontally. Now, where on earth would something like this actually be possible? Some candidates include Saudi Arabia as part of the Neolan project, they already plan to build the line, a futuristic linear city. Tokyo, where vertical land use is a necessity. Or even Shanghai, a financial hub already known for pushing architectural boundaries. However, these towers require more than ambition. They need economic stability, political will, and massive long-term investment. If you're fascinated by the future of cities, technology, and engineering marvels like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We dive deep into the world's boldest ideas every single week. A two-kilometer skyscraper may sound insane, and in many ways, it is. But the idea represents more than just steel and glass. It's a statement about pushing limits, rethinking how we live, and imagining what comes next. Will we actually build a tower this high? Maybe, but what's certain is that the ambition behind it is already shaping the cities of the future. This isn't just architecture, it's the future stacked vertically. Imagine standing at the base of a structure so immense that your eyes can't trace its full height. You tilt your head back until your neck strains, but the tower keeps rising, fading into mist, then into thin air, then into the realm of clouds. Sunlight catches on its glass surface, scattering across a thousand panels like a living prism. And somewhere up there, two kilometers above your feet, people are waking up to a sunrise no one on the ground can see. This is not a distant dream anymore. Deep inside laboratories and architectural studios, humanity is sketching a new horizon, one that doesn't stretch outward, but upward. The two-kilometer skyscraper isn't just another race for records, it's the moment the line between architecture and atmosphere begins to blur. For the first time, a city would not sit on the earth, it would climb through it. At ground level, the tower's foundation is a world of its own. To support something that weighs more than a mountain, engineers imagine a base like a buried iceberg. Vast, invisible, anchored into bedrock by a forest of titanium piles. Here, machines hum day and night, monitoring stress, vibration, temperature. The building breathes, flexes, and adapts, almost alive, adjusting to the rhythm of the wind. 
Above, the lower levels host streets in the sky, markets, transport hubs, and green plazas wrapped in glass shells that filter light like rainforest canopies. As you rise higher, the air thins, the light changes. Pressure differences once considered deadly for habitation are now controlled by intricate environmental systems. Artificial microclimates mimic the comfort of sea level even at 1,500 meters, where outside the air is colder, thinner, and edged with the scent of ozone. The tower becomes a vertical ecosystem designed to feed itself, recycling air, water, and energy through a closed loop of technology that blurs the boundary between architecture and biology. Every hundred meters, the experience changes. You could travel from humid tropics to cool alpine conditions without ever leaving the building. Sky gardens act as lungs for the megastructure, growing plants that purify air and regulate humidity. Drones buzz quietly along service corridors, delivering packages and maintenance parts. Windows shift their transparency automatically, adjusting to the intensity of sunlight. It's not just a skyscraper, it's an environment, a controlled fragment of Earth ascending into the heavens. The higher you go, the more surreal it becomes. At 1,000 meters, clouds drift past the observation decks. Rain forms outside, vapor collects against the glass, and the hum of the wind becomes a constant presence. A reminder that above this point, human architecture meets the raw energy of the sky. Lightning rods weave through the crown like neural lines, channeling the fury of storms into silent electrical harvesters. The building captures power from the very forces that once threatened it. Yet the greatest challenge of all isn't structural, it's psychological. What does it mean to live your life in the clouds? To never see the ground? To measure your world not by streets, but by altitude? At 1,800 meters, gravity feels distant, abstract. Elevators glide in silence, powered by magnetic fields, their movement almost imperceptible. Days blend into a haze of sky tones, pale gold mornings, violet sunsets that stretch beneath you like oceans of color. It's beautiful, yes, but it's also isolating. In this new vertical world, humanity learns that height has a cost. The tower's uppermost levels are more than residences. They are observatories of existence. Scientists study the atmosphere at close range, measuring particles and cosmic radiation that ground-based labs can't reach. Astronomers peer through clear domes, watching the curvature of Earth, tracing the line where blue fades into black. Here, the stars appear sharper, the sky darker, the silence deeper. Standing there, humanity might realize it has built not just a skyscraper, but a monument to its own persistence, to its refusal to stop climbing. Every part of the building tells a story of balance. The higher it rises, the lighter it becomes. Weight, heat, and motion are redistributed by algorithms that never sleep. A thousand sensors detect micro-shifts and adapt in real time. The glass is no ordinary material. It's electrochromic, solar reactive, capable of turning opaque to block glare or translucent to capture heat. Rainwater flows into invisible veins that feed hydroelectric converters. Waste is recycled through microorganic systems that turn decay into fuel. It's a city that sustains itself, a prototype for how life might exist when the Earth below can no longer expand. But even as we marvel at its brilliance, the two-kilometer tower raises uncomfortable questions. Who will it be for? Will it become a sanctuary for the privileged, floating above the noise of the world below? Or could it be the prototype for a future where cities no longer sprawl across land but grow vertically, preserving the planet's surface for nature? The race to build higher is no longer just a matter of ambition. It's a reflection of who we are and who we want to become. At sunset, the top of the tower enters a world no city has ever known. The light is purer here. The air glows in gradients of amber and silver. Clouds drift far below like oceans of cotton. The sound of the world fades into silence, and for a moment you can almost believe that this is how the future feels. Weightless, still, endless. Below, the lights of the city begin to flicker, forming constellations that mirror the stars above. Humanity has built its own sky. From this height, the scale of Earth changes. Mountains flatten, rivers turn into silver threads, storms become swirling galaxies, and for those who stand at the summit, looking down through layers of glass, steel, and atmosphere, the message is clear. We have learned not only to build higher, but to dream deeper, because to reach two kilometers above the ground is to touch the edge of imagination itself. Yet the greatest triumph of this skyscraper isn't its height, 
It's its harmony. Every component, from the foundation buried deep in stone to the spire that touches the stratosphere, is designed to coexist. Wind no longer fights the structure, it dances with it. Temperature shifts are not threats, they are rhythms the building learns to follow. In this way, the tower becomes more than architecture. It becomes a metaphor for humanity's future, resilient, adaptive, and endlessly reaching. But progress never stands still. Already, designers are talking about towers that breathe, buildings that grow, cities that evolve like living organisms. The two-kilometer skyscraper might be the first, but it will not be the last. Just as the Burj Khalifa redefined the skyline of Dubai, this new megastructure will redefine what it means to inhabit space itself. It will push us to reconsider gravity not as a limitation, but as a design parameter. And perhaps one day, centuries from now, when future generations look back at images of this tower rising through the clouds, they'll see it not as a monument to arrogance, but as evidence of a turning point. The moment humanity began building not just to dominate the sky, but to understand it because in its steel and glass reflection, we find our own desire to ascend, not just physically, but spiritually, intellectually, collectively. The wind at two kilometers high carries no sound of traffic, no echo of streets, only the soft hum of turbines, the faint resonance of air moving past vast surfaces, the heartbeat of technology. From here, the world seems fragile and finite, and maybe that's the true purpose of building so high to remind us how small we are and yet how extraordinary our reach can be. When night falls, the tower becomes a beacon visible for hundreds of kilometers. Its lights trace its geometry into the darkness like a celestial spine. Satellites passing overhead reflect off its surface, as if acknowledging its presence. To those below, it's a reminder that the future has already begun. To those above, it's proof that no horizon is too distant. And yet, as ambitious as it is, the story of the two-kilometer skyscraper is not about conquering the sky. It's about learning to belong within it. To live responsibly in a world we once only admired from below. To understand that innovation is not just measured in meters, but in meaning. Because the higher we climb, the clearer the view becomes. Not of the stars, but of ourselves. So when that first beam of dawn touches the pinnacle of the tower, illuminating glass, steel, and human will, it won't just signal a new day. It will mark a new chapter in our history. A moment when humanity finally learned to build with the sky, not against it. And somewhere, far above the clouds where the air is thin and the light eternal, a small red beacon blinks at the tower's peak, a pulse against infinity, a heartbeat in the heavens, quietly declaring that the dream of reaching higher has only just begun.